Lead to rhythm strip at the bottom of the images show two premature complexes, 4th and 11th. These premature complexes are narrow and resemble the QRS complexes of sinus rhythm. Hence, they are supraventricular ectopic beads. Ventricular ectopic beads are bizarre and wide, totally different from the QRS complexes in sinus rhythm. Supraventricular ectopic beads originating in the atrium or upper part of the AV junction have P waves preceding the QRS complexes. But these may be submerged in the T wave of the preceding beat. Mid-junctional beats have their P waves within the QRS complex and hence obscure. In a low junctional rhythm, inverted P waves can be seen after the QRS with a short RP interval. In the current tracing, no definite P waves belonging to the ectopic beat are discernible. The premature beat is followed by a compensatory pause which is less than fully compensated in that it is about 120 milliseconds less than twice the regular sinus cycle length. In ventricular ectopic beats, the pauses are fully compensated meaning that the coupling interval between the preceding normal beat and the ectopic beat added to the pause will be exactly twice the regular sinus cycle length. This is because the ventricular ectopic beat seldom gets conducted back to the sinus node to reset it or it reaches there late after the sinus beat has already occurred and captured the atrium. In contrast, the supraventricular ectopic beat usually discharges the sinus node prematurely and resets the sinus cycle so that the pause is less than fully compensated. The difference in the length of the pause from the sinus cycle length depends on the time taken for the supraventricular ectopic beat to travel up to the region of the sinus node at which point the sinus cycle restarts. The pause can be lengthier if there is suppression of the sinus node activity by the ectopic discharge as in sinus node dysfunction. This ECG also shows deep S waves in V2 and V3 which might indicate left ventricular hypertrophy. The tall T waves in V3 and V4 is more of a normal variant than that which could occur in hyperkalemia and hyperacute phase of myocardial infarction. The latter condition is often missed and mandates a repeat ECG if the clinical condition is suggestive. Just as frequent ventricular ectopy can be the forerunner of ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation, frequent atrial ectopics can be the forerunner of atrial tachycardia and atrial fibrillation. In those with dual AV nodal physiology, an appropriately timed supraventricular ectopic will find the fast pathway refractory and conduct down the slow pathway. When it reaches the lower end, if the fast pathway has recalled, it conducts back initiating a slow fast type of re-entrant AV nodal tachycardia AVNRT. Supraventricular ectopics can arise in multiple foci. If they occur at a rate above 100 per minute with three or more different P wave morphologies, it is known as multifocal atrial tachycardia MAT. MAT is also called chaotic atrial rhythm. MAT can occur in those with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Supraventricular ectopics can occur with stretching of atria due to overload. In acute myocardial infarction, if frequent SVPCs are noted on the monitor, it is likely that there is left ventricular dysfunction producing left atrial overload due to elevated left ventricular and diastolic pressure. SVPC can also be a manifestation of hypertensive heart disease or other structural heart disease leading to left atrial enlargement and increased wall stress which could lead on to atrial fibrillation later. Can supraventricular ectopics appear like ventricular ectopics? Usually, supraventricular ectopics have a narrow QRS complex with a duration less than 120 milliseconds. But when the conduction down to the ventricles are abnormal, as in a pre-existing bundle branch block or a transient conduction block induced by prematurity, the QRS complexes can be wide and mimic a ventricular ectopic beat. But a preceding P wave, if present, may indicate the supraventricular origin. It is also possible to have a ventricular ectopic soon after a sinus P wave, which appears in a similar way. This ECG shows 
supraventricular tachycardia with aberrant conduction having right bundle branch block morphology